This is Anabaptist Perspectives, and we are here today to talk about money. Steve Russell is with us today, and we're going to talk about money in pre-modern Catholicism. Steve is not a stranger to Anabaptist Perspectives. He has been with us on numerous previous episodes, and he is the author of Overcoming Evil, God's Way. He teaches history and theology at Faith Builders educational programs. In preparation for this conversation, I try to orient myself somewhat to the issues involved, because much of this is new to me, and so I have a lot to learn here. But I found this article in Crisis Magazine. It's a lay Catholic publication. The article was written by Jeffrey Tucker, and he says this. One of the earliest statements against interest comes from the Council of Nicaea, which sought to crack down on avaricious practices among the clergy, among which was lending money at a profit. The council condemned this and other attempts at, and this is in quotes, dishonorable gain. It was surely a wise teaching, necessary to stop corruption, but there was a slight problem. The council broadened its mandate beyond the priesthood and implied that the practice was universally wrong. It added scriptural proof from the psalmist that interest itself was immoral. He that hath not put out his money to usury, nor taken bribes against the innocent, he that doth these things shall not be moved forever. So, how did the Catholic Church view money and economics prior to and leading up to the Reformation? Did this statement in the Council of Nicaea become the dominant position in the church? I believe the statement in, in Nicaea was directed specifically at the clergy. But over time, that was broadened out, as was suggested here in the quote that you read, to everyone. That, and the, per, the reason for that is they looked back at the Old Testament, which says to the Jewish people that uh, they may not lend money to their own brothers at, a, uh, at interest. They, they should give or uh, loan money, but not at interest. They can loan it to a stranger or a non-Jew at interest. And the, and the, Christian, uh, the early Christians took that and made it their own. So it was, uh, if there was a Christian who needed money, we should give, but we shouldn't ask for um, usury or interest, which uh, back in the early days would have been seen as identical. Nowadays, when you talk about usury, people mean excessive interest, but back here it would have meant any interest. So it got broadened out to the uh, Christians in general, which is one of the reasons over time Jews became the main money lenders in Europe because it was all right for them to lend money at interest to Christians. They couldn't lend it to their own people at interest, but they could lend it to Christians, and Christians weren't supposed to lend money to each other at interest. Over time, uh, this did change in, um, in the, uh, I don't know, probably high Middle Ages. The uh, Christians started to develop banks, and banks handle money, but they also have to make money through using money. One of the things that the early Christians would have said is that it's wrong for money to engender money. There was a real emphasis on work. You should work with your hands to produce uh, profit, to produce money. It was seen as immoral for money to make money. But once you start having a banking system, you're into a little bit more of a problem. I don't know all the details, but the, the um, banks started to come up with ways that they could um, use money and charge for the use of the money, and uh, therefore they could, they could actually uh, be a legitimate business that, that um, made money with money, I guess you could say. One of the things that the church said was necessary was if you're going to uh, have a banking system, then there has to be uh, risk on both ends, the person who's borrowing and the person who's lending the money. So um, I guess that was seen as somehow making it more uh, proper. If, if, if I'm at danger of losing some money and you are also at danger, one of us lending to the other. All the way up until the 1800s, uh, a Catholic priest, if he felt that there was a, a, a reason to talk, to ask in, in the confession booth, uh, one of his parishioners, if he was uh, lending money out at interest, that was a legitimate question for the priest to ask. Are you lending money? Are you getting interest on it? Um, that only changed in the, uh, I think it would have been the early 1800s. And part of the reason for that is 
By that point, the Catholics started to see that there might be some kind of legitimacy in lending money out at, at an interest, a rate of interest that wasn't too high so that somebody could start a business or somebody could buy a farm. Um, so th so as, as our uh, economic system changed, the church's position in the 1800s started to shift as well. You've talked some, or briefly mentioned, some of the thinking behind this. You mentioned the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. You mentioned the um, resistance to money being made just by virtue of having money. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious if you could talk more about uh, the ideas or the thoughts that motivated this um, strong resistance to usury or interest. I think one part of it is that there was actually uh, an emphasis on being productive, actually making something, going out and farming or becoming a, tra uh, a skilled tradesman who could um, make something with his hands. And that the, en the emphasis was on that, that we should be producers. And when it, it seemed to, to, uh, to the Catholics that this was at least a questionable way of making a livelihood uh, where you were using money to produce more money. They felt that it's, it was more proper and more fitting with what we are as, as humans who are made in the image of God to actually produce something. The emphasis was on production. Mm -hmm. And if you could make a living without the production, that would be a threat to what they believed really needed to be happening when somebody was making an income. Yes, I think so. Mm -hmm. okay. So how did the Protestant reformers engage with this? Because we've been talking about this as a Catholic position, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but there were those in the Reformation that left the church. And I'm curious, was it something that they often also wanted to reform, or did they accept the Catholic position? I would say uh, Luther was probably the one who most closely uh, stayed with the Catholic position. Calvin um, saw the possibility of using money to make money and, and to become more productive. Um, and so Calvin was much more open to this, although he also saw the dangers of usury or um, he thought it was legitimate, that it could be uh, legitimate for someone to borrow money to start a business, let's say. But he also saw the danger of seeing a significant part of my income going is going to come out of the money that I lent to you and that you're going to be paying me back with interest. He, he saw that, uh, Calvin saw that as at least potentially dangerous, but he thought we needed to be willing to help a brother who was, who was either had an idea about starting a, a business or maybe was just in need. And, and uh, now that, uh, I think Calvin would have agreed with the Catholics that um, if it's a brother in need, uh, he's had some kind of financial um, setback and really needs money to keep on going. I think that Calvin would have said you should give it to him without interest, which would be which would have been the Catholic uh, position. One thing that Calvin is very care uh, very clear about is that um, even though it might be legitimate for me to lend you some money and charge interest if you've got this business that you want to do, nobody should make that his way of making his money. Nobody should be a user only. I, I might have enough money that I can lend you some money, but I shouldn't make my livelihood that way. Um, this concept too of risk, uh, the, the Catholics, the medieval Catholics had that, and I think the Protestants, I don't know if they would have focused on that, but it's out of this concept that the, uh, I think, uh, I, don't, I don't know as much about the, the economics as uh, as I should, but I think it's where the joint stock company came out, where people would put money together, they would um, fit out ships and send them out uh, to, to uh, Asia to get spices or something like that. And we're all risking this our money together. And I think that was seen as legitimate, a legitimate way to invest and maybe make a lot of money out of that investment. It's not from Calvin, but later on, the Calvinists started shifting uh, uh, Calvin was very careful about the legitimacy of lending out money. But later on, the whole thing about borrowing and, uh, and lending out money and growing a, a company that, that uh, becomes successful because I've borrowed money, that starts to um, be seen among uh, Calvinists as a sign that you're probably one of the elect if you can be a successful businessman. Calvin actually would have been a little bit hesitant about that. 
uh, if you were a success, successful businessman, it might be because you were avaricious, as you, uh, to use the word that you um, quoted earlier. It's a kind of a mixed picture, um, but over time, as uh, it became clear that borrowing money could benefit people, even the poor, uh, both the Protestants, the Protestants first um, accepted it and used it a lot, and then the Catholics kind of followed along and saw it as potentially good. Well, that's very interesting. I think many in our audience will be curious what the Anabaptist, the first Anabaptist, had to say about this, but I think we'll leave that for another episode, which we can hopefully get to later today. But I'm curious what you think. We're talking about what the early Catholics thought, we're talking about what the Protestant reformers thought, but as an Anabaptist yourself and a reader of the Bible, I'm curious what your take on these questions is. One of my favorite classes to teach at Faith Builders is Old Testament survey. I don't consider myself a businessman, I'm not a businessman, and I don't consider myself someone who necessarily has a lot of deep insight about economics, but I was, uh, over time, I probably taught the class about 20 times, uh, I started to notice all of the concern in the Old Testament for, um, for the person who's uh, down on his luck, so to speak. I also noticed that in Deuteronomy, it says that the land I'm taking you into is a prosperous land. It's a fruitful land, and there should not be any poor among you. Then just a few verses after that, it says, but if there are poor among you. And then it gives programs to help these people. Uh, and let's face it, some people are better businessmen, some people are better farmers, some people are better managers. There are going to be some people who have trouble. Um, but but the Old Testament is concerned about that. It cares for human flourishing. We no longer live in an agrarian society like they did. And most of the history of the Catholic Church and even the early Protestant Church, uh, most of the people were farmers. And so it was a, an agrarian society. And um, th that kind of society can take care of the poor a little bit differently than a society that has become urban and industrialized, and I guess maybe post-industrialized now for us. But I think that the care that is shown in the Old Testament is something that we have to look at and ask ourselves. So in our setting, what do we do? It doesn't mean exactly what's in the Old Testament anymore. You know, it just wouldn't work. Uh, one, of the, one of the beautiful things in the Old Testament is almost everyone lived on a farm. And so if, uh, if I was a bad manager and I lost my farm, and I might even have to sell my children into slavery, well, depending on when the Jubilee year comes along, either my own children, my, maybe even myself, I might get a new start when the Jubilee year comes because the Jubilee was the, was the time when all debts were forgiven and the land that originally belonged to my family would be given back. So if I didn't get the second chance, maybe my son would or maybe my grandson would. There was built into the system um, ways to help people not be burdened by the problems that dad or granddad had. And um, I think we have to, I think modern Christians have to be uh, inventive. How can we help each other? Well, that sounds like wisdom to me. So thank you for sharing your thoughts and orienting us a bit to the history. This is part of a larger series that we're doing about economics. So this will provide some helpful framing, I think, for some of the episodes that are coming up next where we talk about distributism and hopefully an Anabaptist perspective on this also. Okay. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us for this episode, and thanks to our donors and partners for making this possible. To learn more about this ministry, view our About Us video linked below. You can also subscribe to our supporters' update at anabaptistperspectives.org.